this new age of entrepreneurship is driven by black women. You know, it if is. I look at my demographics of up. Oh. Y'all got that? You know. I'm sorry, John. Thank you. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Trip Podcast with XTC. I'm Shalanda. I'm Tristan. And I'm Chris. As an entrepreneur starting or growing your business, you may have a destination, but the journey getting there can be a trip. We want to be your travel companions and inject a dose of XTC as we explore real life conversations about navigating the world of entrepreneurship in the US and the Caribbean. Come take this trip with us. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you were recording. It is recording. Good. <laughs> Hello, Trippers. <laughs> we are going to have an exciting episode today because we have our friend Joe. But before we do a deep dive into what Joe is up to and who Joe is, what you sipping while you tripping? <laughs> Oh, oh, Joe, 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 ain't, Joe ain't even playing that game. Joe ain't playing that game. Joe, like, we ain't sipping, we drinking. I like Joe. You gotta call him, like, throwback Joe. I know, right? I'm cute, right? That's awesome. <laughs> Are you getting some water, Joe? H2O. It's clear, but yes, it is water. Awesome. Stay you can say anything, it. Joe. Joe looked like he just came from that tailgate party. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaking back into the door talking about it. these are just water bottles. Good old H2O. Yeah. It's clear. It's clear. <laughs> yeah, vodka and water kind of looks the same. So you're, exactly. So in that case, I'll go second. You know, who puts vodka in a wine glass? <laughs> I'm with you, Joe. Almost empty, Tristan. So you've been sipping for a minute, whatever it is. <laughs> Joe and I did the drink challenge during the open. He just got caught. <laughs> <laughs> oh what, what are you drinking, Shalanda? <laughs> What do I usually, I, I, you know, to do these episodes and have a lot of fun, I need make up with people. So oh. I'm, that's what I'm fueling up on right now. I was and like, I she got a nice little glow. Clean, huh? <laughs> I was like, she got a nice little glow. It might be a little red wine over there. It might be a little red wine. <laughs> Not yet. That's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> And here in these last uh, 15 seconds, I feel like a broken record, but, uh, you know, I got my triple uh, threat caffeination, <laughs> my hydration, and my celebration. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's unpack Boy, this episode. Chris has got the, the trifecta going there. Exactly. You think about that. Done. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, folks. So August is Black Business Month, and we could not think of anybody better to have on this episode than Joseph Simmons, affectionately known as Joe. So <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thanks for having me. And I like, I love the way you say Joe. <laughs> yes. because that. every time i think of you i have a smile on my face our interactions i met joe what probably about a year ago so yeah, yeah, yeah a year ago um and every time i think of joe i just get a smile on my face and we're going to talk a little bit about the center for micro entrepreneurial training a little bit later but for our listeners, let me just give you a sneak peek as to what Joe, who Joe is and what Joe has been up to. So Joe is a retired pharmaceutical executive. He's in Orlando, Florida, my second home. <laughs> my former started, home. <laughs> your former home. He started at Baxter Corporation, Johnson & Johnson, and Sunrise Medical. So he is knee deep, was knee deep in the healthcare field, as was I. So we have that in common. Yes, we and do. I, nice. Shared a little bit. He is the founder of the Center of Micro Entrepreneurial Training, a nonprofit. 
nonprofit that was organized in May 2020, empowering women. Did you hear that, Tristan? Empowering women. I thought you were so powerful you didn't need more empower. Oh, we always need empowerment. Always need empowerment. Joe does that. But he also empowers black and brown entrepreneurs to start and grow their business, which is definitely the trippers that listen to our episode. So who better to have with us than Joe for Black Business Month? Thank you for the introduction. Wow. You do a lot. Yeah, I have to try to make sure you're talking about me. (laughs) Of course we are. (laughs) So, Joe, why don't you share, you know, August is Business um, Black Business Month, and I know you've been up to a lot of different things behind the scenes. Some you can share and some you can't, but what can you share with us that you've been doing this month? Well, number one, I'm still on that continual journey of uh, providing the fundamentals for entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. I'm in the middle of my 11th cohort. Uh, you know, for those in the audience that don't know, you were a participant in number nine back in January. <laughs> yep. It brings a smile to my face, the uh, the energy and the engagement that you and your partner in crime, uh, Sami, you know, <laughs> brought to the uh, brought to the cohort. But but quite seriously, I've uh, I've been involved in the middle of that. So we're on day. We'll be day four on Monday. And that, of course, mm-hmm. is marketing and sales. I was at an event. Uh, Wells Fargo and the African American Chamber had an event uh, Thursday night, and they mm-hmm. were talking to uh, the Florida High Women. They were celebrating them, but the main focus was around Black Business Month. And it was interesting to have a group of entrepreneurs in the same room, networking and making connections because one of the things that will change the trajectory of black business over the next month, years and decades and centuries is mutuality mm-hmm. you know, to get to a point where, you know, Tristan, Chris and Joe work together. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I've made a, uh, I made a, I had a conversation yeah. with Mer- Parker. Left me out. No, 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 no. Keep going, Joe. I was happy. Show me Carter because I started I, saw your face. I, 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 yeah. I did that on purpose. <laughs> see, that, did you see the reaction yeah. on her face? Did you see the reaction on her face? And I was like, something bigger is gonna come. No. Let me just, let me just chill. <laughs> but, but you know, one of the things that has become quite apparent, Chris and Tristan, is that. Uh, this new age of entrepreneurship is driven by black women. You know, it if is. I look at my demographics of cohort. <laughs> Y'all got that? You know. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 you, know, if you look at the demographics in the U.S., uh, 60 to 70 percent of the new entrepreneurs coming into the stream are females. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, you ladies are really driving it and make it happen. But the key thing is, as I said before, I heard this statement, Murray Parker in Atlanta gave me this statement, I called it collective mutuality that we as a people have to have in regards to, you know, not making this just a singular month and Black Business Month, but every month is about how we can collaborate, you know, uh, and, and we're all doing it, you know, like you and I being on the same podcast, podcast together, how can we collaborate and, you know, St. Croix, you coming yeah. to the States, how we can collaborate here with Sammy. You know, all yes. this collaboration is is just beautiful. And I mm-hmm. and I just hope that if we look at this time, we can look back, you know, and our children will look back and say, you know what? They started a movement. Mm-hmm. You know, because unfortunately, mm-hmm. as I look back on my father and what he went through, I I have a more sense of it was a moment. You know, mm-hmm. we, we got diverted in the 70s. We got diverted. We got, you know, offline in the 80s. And we're right back where we were, you know, back when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, so that that's that's the danger of that. We've got to look at our history. and We've got to say we've got to work together. We can't be in silos. You know, mm-hmm. you bring something to the table. I bring something to the table. You know, let's do it together and take advantage mm-hmm. of the system. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, that's Beautiful. been, you know, 20 days. 
Wow. And I still got more things to do over the next two weeks. So. Of course, of course. Oh, we know who your taskmaster was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's awesome is that you what you're saying resonates with a previous episode that we had where we had a conversation to collaborate or not to collaborate. And we really mm-hmm. took a deep dive into what true, meaningful collaboration looks like. And to your point, Joel, you know, Previous generations, it may have been a moment, but I really feel that this is a movement because I think our mindset as black people or people of color or woke white folks like a brother Chris <laughs> over here, <laughs> right? We understand that we build capacity when we come together and we help to create generational wealth for all of us. We're creating a legacy. It's not just being able to survive the times. It's about building a foundation where our kids and our grandkids would be able to continue the legacy that we're creating today. Mm. You you know, you're absolutely right. right. Um, But it goes back to a principle of business. And again, my Mm -hmm. back, you were, as you were saying earlier, you know, I started out as a salesperson and I started out in a small segregated town in Southeast West Virginia called Lester, West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And I was motivated one year, I wanted a bike. And mm. I asked my mom, you know, her name was Hetty, Hetty Simmons. And I said, mom, I really want this bike, this Raleigh bike. She said, well, you're gonna have to go out and work and do mm-hmm. something because we can't afford the bike. Right. And I'm th- what can I do? So I had this little boy's life magazine in the back. It said, sell greeting cards and you can uh-huh. make money. <laughs> it took five years, ladies and gentlemen, to get that freaking wow. bike. <laughs> but it, but, but it, it taught me something about the principle of no like, and trust. Mm-hmm. The people at small town know, knew my father, knew my mother, and they knew me. So they knew me, right. liked me, and they trusted me. Now, mm-hmm. I will say, there were some of those people that didn't pay their bills. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm still looking for payment on those on those greeting cards. <laughs> Is there interest? <laughs> but no, no but, but, but Jolanda, you're right in that for us to collaborate, we have to know, like, and trust each other. Mm-hmm. And those are the three elements that I think that if we can build around that, and especially mm-hmm. that trust factor, and sometimes yeah. that's a leap of faith. You know, it, it's something we've got to work on, but we've got to do that. We can't say, I can do it by myself, because you can't. Mm-hmm. The, the, the numbers are just too daunting to say, I can do this by myself, because you bring a strength, Chris brings a strength, Tristan brings a strength. So now I've got, you know, four people that, you know, that have strength, and we can push that stone up the hill, but it's hard for one person to push that stone up the hill. Man, so yeah, like collaboration you. is the key. Mm-hmm. Sounds like that collaboration had a little bit of um, delegation in it. So, you know, yeah. I don't want to detour us a little. Oh, and he said yes. I just, yeah. <laughs> no, you can fix your face, baby. We got 10 seconds. I'm going to hit this detour where I'm going to take everything completely off track because Joe definitely touched on a whole lot of things that I really want to speak about. And I'm going to give mm-hmm. you guys a little insight as to a conversation I had this week with my pops. Hit that detour, Chris. <laughs> Let me let me get caffeinated for this store. Mm, my boy Joe just swerved on you. That's why he left you out because he out here cruising with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, really quick, Joe, I'm over here. My head's down a lot of times. I, I take notes. You know, I was a horrible student, but a better student of business, right? So, mm-hmm. when you were speaking, the one thing that definitely stood out to me was the no like trust, right? Mm-hmm and legacy. And we're talking about how we kind of had those gaps where we kind of skipped out. So Joe, I'm gonna give you in like 30 seconds, my really quick take on this. What I believe happened is that maybe earlier on in the sixties, we did have a movement. Everybody, um, we had a goal that we was working towards, right? And from that generation, they decided to work towards the goal. And then we had the other generation that because they were working towards the goal and made it a little easier. So now we didn't, have to work as hard and it kind of gets watered down um the whole way so now it's like we're somewhat in a better we felt we were in a better place but what we did not pass down was the knowledge the lessons in which we learned 
on those journeys. So in that way, our their kids, which would have might have been my parents, and even from my parents to me, the the we no longer pass that information on, right? Because all we did was pick and choose what it is that we didn't want from that, and now we don't speak about the generational wealth. We don't speak about. We don't want you to work as hard. We've been doing this, and what it was to do was provide a simpler, or easier life for us. So while you were selling magazines and you know about that, you don't want your kids to go through that. So now when they ask for the bike, might be a little more lenient. You know, we'll be like, uh, make sure you do your homework and we get that bike kind of thing. Um, am I far off? How do you feel about that? I'm going to uh, take you down another detour. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> I don't know if I like this, this GPS. I ain't never seen Shalana on the screen for a detour yet. <laughs> I I me. think as a child of the uh, as a baby boomer, one of the challenges that uh, that I had was my parents wanted a better life for me. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. But my generation did not provide a better life for my kids or the kid after. Right. Okay. We're not swerving so, yet, right? When we're still <laughs> But um, the, um, the problem came in regards to, when you said, Tristan, earlier, the goal was X. The goal, the goal shifted. The goal mm -hmm. moved from equality, right? We wanted equality. We wanted a, you know, we wanted a fair shot to integration. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the detour right there. We came to the fork in the road in the 70s and said, okay, well, you got a choice. Either you can go integration or you can go equity. Mm -hmm. We chose integration. Oh, we went, it, right. But but that that's what I felt we were working for, that equality. We wanted to be integrated within the system. I just don't think they were thinking that far ahead. No, no, no it, was, it was almost like, it was almost like the uh, the escape from New York, that movie. You know, we, we left our community. We abandoned a lot of the principles that we grew up with yep. in the 70s and 80s in regards to, you know, think about that. Uh, if you look at the statistics of income, the divide yeah. happened really in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm. So now we're mm. right back. If you look at our income, our wealth, our wealth gap started in the late seventies and the eighties. That was it. Damn. Well, I, you know what we? Well, I, I'm we, gonna we, need, we need some souvenirs here. One of the next segment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that the people? Yeah. I got wow. Christian thinking. I see. I see. No, well, it's, not, it's not even that we we, we think, you know, like, and I thought, yeah. Oh, I know it's hard to cut that one off. A longer <laughs> segment, man. We need a longer. But, so listen, no. this is what I'm going to do. My souvenir to you today, Tristan, is for us to continue where Joe left off in the last mm -hmm. segment because we do need a little bit of more time on that conversation. Yeah, uh, agreed. Oh, I love yeah. you, baby, for that. Yeah. Thank you. So, so Joe. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Tristan. So when we hit that separation, though, how, what did our goals? Sh so now what you're saying is that we hit that integration period. We didn't go equity. So now we're looking for equity. Yeah. What'd you say? Yeah. But how do we keep this focus? Because 10 years from now, I've, nah, I, mean, I hope not 10. God is my way. That's how, maybe, let's go 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. I feel it's going to have that other shift. So what do you think the next shift might be? Accountability. What do you think we be preparing for? Accountability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the we have to get our grips around, and again, my, and again, I'm going to say this over and over again. My mindset, I come from a sales background, so to me it's always about mm -hmm. the number. We've got to say to our, we've got to say to ourselves as organizations, I want to put myself out of business by 2053. And that's my Thank you. And that's what I'm going to work toward is putting myself out of business in 2053. So I've got to have timelines to say, we're going to hit this goal by 2032, this goal by 2040, and this goal by 2053. That's how we want to change. Because let me just finish. One of the most devastating 
numbers here in the states that we're dealing with is that by 2053, if we stay on the trajectory that we're on, African Americans in America will have zero wealth. There we go. Now I would just there we go. That was a number that was, and and again, the thing that really irritates me, and I'm going to use that word lightly, is that that number was 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 talked was never talked about in the 2016 debate. When Andrew mm. Yang said that number, not one candidate said, oh my God, we need to do something. We need to have a Marshall <laughs> Plan to change that trajectory. And now here we are in 2022, where you've got companies because of George Floyd and other things saying, okay, we can now address it, but now we've got to have those accountabilities, those, those steps in place to say that, Joe, Tristan and Chris, if your organization doesn't hit this number by 2022, Guess what? You know, you're mm -hmm. underperforming. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. wow. And that's Joe what I'm just touched about. On, Joe just touched on something that we spoke about like way before, and even when we were talking about doing our businesses, when to pull out. That's 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 what I kind of got from it. Um, but Joe, like, you're, I won't say like you're just blowing my mind because even with that conversation in 2016, the reason why I feel like we've never gotten any light is because it never applies to those people that in that conversation. So to me, like, it just, it doesn't matter. But, but again, I know we're going off topic. This is another detour. I, 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 oh my, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but the thing that flips me out is that you have one party that when it, Joe Biden is sitting in the White House because of black women in 2016. Mm -hmm. mm. Hit that clap button, because that ain't no lie. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's, just be, let's just be real about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you have that, that ec you've already put equity, you, we've given you an uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. So recognize to say, you know what? I understand that, I understand the demographics that you've got to win a 50 state election, but basically it boiled down to Georgia. It boiled down to uh, three or four mm -hmm. other, Arizona, in Pennsylvania and Michigan. That was, yeah. And it was always people of color that got him across the finish line. So mm -hmm. January 21st, what's the first bill up? HR1 dies. Mm -hmm. Die. So what I'm saying is this, and I tell the entrepreneurs this, is that we can't count on other people to help us. We've got to do it ourselves. And mm -hmm. I, I appreciate, you know, the woke people coming along and saying, you know what, we're, but it's on us. I can't mm -hmm. wait for Joe Biden or whoever right. to do it. We have got to roll up our sleeves and say, you know what, I am focused on making this work. And I will mm -hmm. give 20 years of my life to making this work. Mm -hmm. See, Joe's talking and that truth. He is. And I want our listeners, particularly those in the U.S. Virgin Islands, to hear what she's, he's saying, because even though Joe is on the mainland and in Florida, a lot of what he's saying is applicable within the U.S. Virgin Islands. What I'm seeing in, you know, the generation of entrepreneurs that are coming up now is that they are taking ownership and doing their own thing. Yes. They are not depending on the government because we have a, a, a kind of like a flip situation here. We're the majority here, okay. right? It's right. on the main line, right? Our governor is black, our senators are black. They, are, you know, people in power look like us. Look like us. Yeah. Um, so we don't have the issue of representation. A lot of the people that are in power are personal friends because the community is so small. It's kind of like your town when you were growing up, mm -hmm. right? You know each other, you yeah. like some people, you don't like some people, and some you trust and some you don't trust. But in order for us to be able to, to bridge that wealth gap, I feel our best chances are entrepreneurship. Oh, most definitely. Most. An eight to five ain't gonna do it for you. No, no. <laughs> Just mm -mm. no. You know? No. And so that's one of the, the reasons we all decided to do this podcast is to be able to share resources between the mainland and the Caribbean and particularly the U.S. Virgin Islands as to how we can collaborate and work together to bridge that wealth gap for generations. And, mm -hmm. and the genesis for the Center for Micro Entrepreneurial Training, my vision is 
what I grew up in, where I grew up in a, in a community where I could go to a black grocery store, I could go to a black farm, I could go to a, a, a black bank if I had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's what I wish. And I, and, and, I, and I think one of the ways that we've got to do that is through collaboration, going back to our, our previous conversation. Now, there's a hole that I think that we've got to address. And that hole is that that I'm seeing is that for entrepreneurs that are in that zero to three year before they can get up, their growth is starting to really, you know, replicate and replicate and, replicate, and then they can move into scale mm -hmm. is 63 percent of the entrepreneurs in that zero to three year gap have no funding in regards to 10 to $20,000. Mm -hmm. So for the entrepreneur that has a million to a half million dollar business, you can go into JP Morgan Chase, Truist Bank, Bank yep. of America, you can probably get help. But we mm -hmm. really need to feel that, you know, the banks or funding has got to keep those seeds that we've planted. Mm -hmm they got to, you know, we got to keep watering so they can get to that three year mark and five year mark where they can be a half million dollars, a million dollars. They're bringing on two to three people because in the States, 63% of the people employ our jobs are generated by small businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get in that mindset of getting these business to scale so they can hire in our community and think what that does, you know, John, you start a business and in three years you hire three people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Your daughters and sons come along. They say, you know what? I've got an idea for a business. You can now go laterally and say, I can help you start that business. Yeah. They hire three and that's, people. And that, that's what I was talking about to a certain extent, Joe. I, and guys, I know we're going to move on to the next segment. And that's what I was talking about where I felt like we just definitely don't um, pass that knowledge. We don't pass those nuggets what end up happening so now like you were saying is that it missed generation two generations in between and we're back to starting over from scratch you know but chris i'm gonna let you go drop that nugget but we gotta <laughs> dive deeper with joe man <laughs> Here yeah <we> <laughs> all right so i have uh two quotes prepared here um that I think kind of wrap this or bring this conversation uh, together. The first one is um, by Desmond Tutu. Um, and he yeah. said, uh, my humanity is bound up in yours for we can only be human together. And uh, speaking to, um, you know, collective mutuality and uh, needing to work together. And then I think the second part that we were kind of discussing here is a Greek proverb that says a society grows great when old men plant trees in whose shade they shall never sit. Exactly. Oh, wow. wow. Exactly. You got quotes from two just... places that I just traveled internationally. Greece. <laughs> from, That's right. <laughs> was from Cape Town, South Africa. And then I just came back from Greece. Like this is just synergistic, <laughs> you know, this is awesome. And so, uh, kind of, again, just kind of pick those quotes out here just based on the conversation and, and um, the need to pass down that knowledge, uh, uh, expecting nothing in return in your lifetime, but in return for uh, those who are coming behind you and to, uh, again, always reach back and help the next person up and not uh, sit at the top alone. So That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. Got, I, I got one. Go ahead. I was going to say, I got one for you, Chris. My mom always told me, you got to bend the tree when it's young so that way you can determine the way it grows, right? So the all the men that planted the trees, they not only planted the trees, but they helped shape the trees, you know? So in that way, you know, you don't want to be having shade grow within shade, but when you determine where it is that you could grow, it could be more bountiful, more useful for everybody. So mm. that that's when you said the... Um, the tree metaphor, I always like that, but it always reminded me about what my mom always used to tell me. So, love it. Good choice. Yeah. yeah. And you were going to say something, Joseph? Uh, I was just going to say, I, I, I just remember uh, when I first got into business, and uh, this is going back in the early '80s, and we just got laptops, and we had, you know, dial-up. And I was home in West Virginia, sitting on the front porch with my mom and dad. And uh, I had my laptop open and he's looking over at me. 
And he's like, well, what are you doing? And so I was trying to explain to him, you know, I said, dad, this is a laptop. I'm getting information in. I'm doing email, blah, blah, blah. And trust me, I'll pay you for, you know, the, <laughs> the bill when it comes to doc. <laughs> but, uh, but he said something to me and he said, you know, I, I just want you to think about this, Joe. You know, I came to West Virginia on the back of a buckboard. Wow. From North Carolina, Burlington, North Carolina. And here I am sitting with you and you're doing something I have no concept of. I said, you know, he said, I understand and landing on the moon, but it was a conversation that, that I had with my father, but I told him, I said, dad, but you gave me other things. Mm -hmm. I said, people skills. You gave me the skill to look and be a, you know, have a vision because he could go into a church and see things that I could not see. And that was the learning that he gave to me. I mean, I, you know, when it came to managing people, that was one of my strengths. But my father's strength was was definitely over the top people skills. And we couldn't talk about business because he but he gave me certain principles that today I still stay with. He said, Joe, good business is addition and multiplication. Bad mm. business, fraction and division. So division. Wow. Yep. So oh, it was just yeah. those fundamental things that but to your point, Chris, about and Tristan about, think about the conversations that you'll have with, you know, your kids, your grandkids, other entrepreneurs, your experiences, the learn, but more importantly, the connections. Because let's face it, that's one of the things that I had to learn probably 10 years into my career was how do I connect myself to resources and get things done? Yep. Mm -hmm. and, you know, for whatever reason, I know whatever, I know. <laughs> and don't take this wrong, Chris, no. but I, one of my tennis buddies said something to me one time, <laughs> done me, and he said, Joe, you're very comfortable around white people. Mm -hmm. And I and I thought about it for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I, I thought about Arthur Ashe, he was my hero going up. And in his documentary, there's a statement that Harry Edwards said, he said, Arthur Ashe could be, could operate on both sides of the picket line. Right. He could be a protester, but he also had his, he also had his body in corporate America. Mm -hmm. And, that, mm -hmm. and that's what we do as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in, yeah. you know, we're in one side here and then we mm -hmm. go to the other side to get things done. Yeah. And, and it's always a challenge is just, you know, push and pull, but it's something that we can pass on. Mm -hmm. Right. You can have those conversations. Okay. When you go into a bank, you should not feel uncomfortable. This is the conversation you're going to have, Tristan. They're going to ask you about this, this and this, and you're going to be able to talk about this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So those are the learning when it comes to making a decision. Okay. You know, Chris, you know, you really ought to think about scaling your business. Well, why is that dad? Well, you're at that point now where you're you're starting to really duplicate things. You need to have operations. Mm -hmm. Think about the think right. about the conversations you'll have with that second generation of entrepreneurs. Right. And then mm -hmm. replicate that, replicate that, and replicate that. Because mm -hmm. those are the things. Those are the little things that we can keep. You know, those are the little things that now we can pass on, not keep, but pass on. Mm -hmm. Did I go engine or? No, Did that makes sense. No, 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 no. It, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm just yeah watching. It was perfect. Time. Um, yeah, we're out of time, but we're gonna have Joe back yes. because <laughs> Joe, this conversation cannot just end here. <laughs> but what I would would like to wrap up by saying is, considering that this is August, um, Black Business Month, I think the conversation that we have is truly relevant, and it talks about us having these conversations to pass on to the next generation. And just yesterday, as I am trying to grow my business, my daughter's beside me. So she's experiencing a lot of the learnings that I'm going through. And she's challenging me, kind of like how you challenge your dad with the yes. laptop, right? Yeah. But we're both learning it together so that once I'm gone, she has those skill sets and those fundamentals to keep things going. And I think Tristan is doing that with his kids. Chris is doing that with um, our little boss, Lady Hazel. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's just what we need to do as entrepreneurs is as we're learning and growing, we're investing in the second, the next generation coming up so that they're 
leaps and bounds ahead of us when they're ready to get going. And, you know, just to, just to uh, coattail off what you're saying, I was at uh, dinner with, uh, with uh, Sammy a few months ago, and I walked in the kitchen, and Sammy and Scott's daughter is at the table with Nadia's okay. daughter. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, you know what? Those two and your daughter, just think of the power they're going to have. Yep. You know, they look mm -hmm. on right. the shoulders of the three of right. you. Right. And they can now take it to a whole nother level. Exactly. That is just beautiful what they'll be able to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank, thank so, you, hey, that Trevor. calls for a drink. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> well, on that note, you want to wrap us up, Chris? <laughs> yes. Uh, Trippers, thank you so much for joining us on this a uh, little bit extended, but much needed for this extension. Um, Joseph mm -hmm. has dropped some amazing knowledge here for us. Uh, and tune in because uh, we have a follow-up episode with Joseph coming up here next week. So thanks here yep. for taking this ride. And uh, yeah, um, stay tuned because this is going to be awesome. Stay here. Don't even unpack. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>